Hello, I'm Dr. Ken Berry, family physician with almost 20 years of clinical experience. And in this short video, let's discuss coronavirus. I'm gonna give you some updates. I've been watching this, this develop very carefully as a physician. We're always interested in things like this and we wanna know as much as we possibly can about it. So I wanna share with you what I've learned about this, what facts I've learned, what myths I've seen out there that you can safely ignore. And then at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about some practical common sense steps you can take should this novel coronavirus become a pandemic. Um, you know it has been declared a public health emergency by both the Centers for Disease Control here in the US and by the World Health Organization. As of the making of this video, there have been 17,491 confirmed cases of this novel coronavirus and 362 confirmed deaths from this virus. Uh, now, obviously we have to trust the governmental sources of these numbers. There's a lot of chatter out there on the interwebs about whether the, these numbers are truly accurate, whether they've been downplayed or whether they've been hyped up. But as of now, that is the official uh, numbers. The goal of this video is not to panic you. It is not to make you worry. It's not to make you lose sleep. This, the goal of this video is to inform you with documented facts, to help you understand what's going on, to uh, remind you to be vigilant always in all situations, but definitely in this situation. And then if you decide that it's necessary, the, the practical common sense steps to prepare for this virus, should you decide to do that. Now, currently the R naught, which is, uh, is a, is a epidemiological term. And what it basically means is if one person has this virus in a normal community setting, how many people will they give it to? I think the, uh, on an annual basis, the influenza virus has an R naught of about 1.8 to two, and so if one person have it, has it, on average, they're gonna give it to two people. The R naught of this virus currently is, is estimated or calculated to be somewhere between three and 4.1. And so it looks like it's more contagious than the influenza virus is on an annual basis. The lethality percentage, which basically means out of 100 people who catch this virus and develop the illness, how many will die? that's currently being calculated and or estimated at somewhere between two and three and a half percent. So if a hundred people become ill with this novel coronavirus, somewhere between two to three and a half of those people will lose their life due to this virus. Now, again, let me emphasize all of these numbers, although they're coming from reputable sources, are calculated or estimated or some degree of both. And ultimately they're based on the information we're, we're being given by China, the government of China and other governmental agencies. And so whether this number is falsely high, falsely low or, or dead on accurate, we don't really know. And that's why I think it's my job to inform you and then you can make your own decision. Now, I'm gonna give you five facts that we think we know that they've been documented in reputable sources. And I'm gonna put the documentation links down below. Uh, they range from the World Health Organization to the Centers for D Disease Control, the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, Johns Hopkins University. So these are not uh, facts that I collected from some conspiracy website. These are from reputable uh, sites that are trying their best to understand this virus and inform the public of the truth. So documented fact number one, there has been documented human to human um, uh, spread. And so people who nece haven't necessarily even been to China, if they're exposed to someone who has been exposed to this virus, then there is definitely documented spread in that fashion. And so that that's number one. We know that <clears throat> number two, it looks like people are contagious with this virus, meaning they can spread it to you even before they develop any symptoms or any fever. And that's been documented in a couple of the cases. Fact number three, there has been documented casual spread, which means from interactions out in the community at work or on a bus or somewhere like that, not necessarily from very close proximity family relationships where there's hugging and kissing and sharing meals and sharing utensils. There has been documented casual community spread. 
So another thing to think about, uh, fact number four, it has been documented in a, at least two cases that the coronavirus has been found in stool. So, and, and, and also with this virus, typically you wouldn't see a lot of diarrhea or gastrointestinal symptoms with this kind of virus, but it looks like there's a, a up to a 10% documented uh, rate of diarrhea and it looks like the virus is gonna be in that diarrhea. And so that the, the common sense steps you can take that I talk about at the end of this video really, really become important. If not only you can catch this from a respiratory droplet, uh, spray, splatter from fomites that you can actually, you know, like countertops, doorknobs, seat backs, you can actually catch this if someone goes to the restroom, uses the restroom and doesn't wash their hands thoroughly, then they touch something much less like hepatitis A, you can catch it in that same fashion. And then uh, documented fact number five, there has been documented that these people, that some of, at least some of the people who have recovered from this novel coronavirus. So they've recovered, they feel better, they have no fever anymore, their symptoms are gone they're still shedding the virus. And so basically they, it looks like even before you develop any symptoms and then after all your symptoms are gone, you can still spread this virus to other people. And so I'm gonna link those facts down below where I found that documentation so you can check it out for yourself. Um, there's also a map that keeps an up-to-date, minute-to-minute update of where the virus is in the world, what cities have been infected, how many, how many uh, documented cases and how many documented deaths. So I'm gonna have links to all that down in the show notes. Now let's talk about some myths I've seen out there. Uh, and I think most of the people who are spreading these myths are well-meaning, but <clears throat> you don't need to bet your life or your family's life on any of these myths. Myth number one is that some concoction that you make with bleach will protect you, whether you just drink the bleach or you make something with the bleach. There's no research that backs that up. There's no documentation that that helps at all. And they're obviously, you know, drinking bleach is a bad idea. And I know some of the people aren't drinking the bleach directly. They're making things with it. That's still, that is, that's very sketchy. I would not bet my family's life on that. Number two, uh, essential oils will protect you from this. That's myth number two. I don't think that's true at all. Uh, me and my family, we use essential oils and we believe in them, but they are not going to protect you from this novel coronavirus. Uh, number three, the ethnicity of people matters. And I think since this started in China and given past world wars and past racism, people automatically jump to assume that maybe you should avoid all Chinese people. There's, I mean, you can catch this novel coronavirus from any human being of any race of any gender, of any age, none of that matters whatsoever. And then myth number four, I, I combined a bunch, that this certain herb or this cer certain root or there's this certain berry that you get from the Himalayas or from Africa or from Jamaica is gonna protect you from this virus. There's absolutely no common sense behind that, nor any research to support that. What you need to do is take the common sense steps that I'm about to outline. That's what's gonna actually protect you from this. Now, I would love it if this novel coronavirus fizzles out, if we're able to contain it with all the infectious disease prevention things that we're doing around the world. I honestly think we should be doing more, but we're not, and so we have to live with what we got. Um, but if this virus does achieve pandemic status, some people would argue that it already has since it's on uh, multiple continents and it has taken life in more than one country. They would say that, that that's the definition of a pandemic, but I don't think the CDC and the World Health Organization have declared this a pandemic yet. So if it does approach a pandemic or become a pandemic, here are the steps that I'm definitely gonna be taking and I recommend that you consider yourself. Number one is isolation. If you and your family stay home, and you're not exposed to any other, any infected human, then it, it is impossible for you to catch this virus. This virus is spread from human to human. Now, <clears throat> if you're eating undercooked meat that, that has the virus in it, then that also could be a, a method of spread. But 99.9999% of people in the US and most uh, modern societies are gonna catch this from another human. And so if you stay home, keep your doors closed, you don't allow entry of any visitors or strangers or family members, then it's gonna be impossible for you to catch this novel coronavirus. 
Step number two is liberal hand washing with warm water and soap. I would say do not trust the hand sanitizers unless you absolutely have to. Uh, just the regular hand sanitizer that you'll buy at a big box store is probably not going to protect you from coronavirus. Number three is having and wearing a proper mask properly. Uh, having had to wear these in surgery in my training, I can tell you it's not fun to wear a mask like this. We also had to get fitted and have a TB mask, which is the quality that you would use. It's not fun, it's, it's not pleasurable to wear this mask. It's hot, it's smothering, but it's better than catching coronavirus. And so if you, if you cannot adhere to step number one, which is stay in your home, you have to go out in public, then you need to definitely adhere to number two, which is the hand washing, and number three, you need to wear a proper mask properly. And there are other YouTube videos about how, what kind of mask you need, and I'll put a link down below just in case you're interested, uh, but then also how to wear it properly. Number four is eye protection. And I find that a lot of the experts out there are remiss in talking about this. This is very important. Your eye, the surface of your eye and your, um, your conjunctiva and around it is a, is a mucosal membrane. You can catch coronavirus if A, someone sneezes in your eye, B, coughs in your eye, C, they go to the restroom and have a bowel movement, they don't wash their hands good, they touch something, then you touch that, then you touch your eye, that absolutely will uh, expose you to the coronavirus. So you have to wear proper wraparound eye protection. Just eyeglasses like this won't do the trick. Uh, I've got a link down below to some that will help protect you, and even those are not 100%. So if in doubt, stay home. Number five is disposable gloves. You can get latex-free gloves in boxes of 100. There's still a good supply of those. I don't think you should start wearing those when you go to the grocery now, but I do think that you should consider buying a box just to have, just in case this does become a pandemic. Next is perhaps even wearing a disposable gown. You can buy these in boxes of 10 or 100 uh, off most websites. Uh, I, this, I mean, that, that's going to be drastic. That's going to look drastic. But if this does achieve pandemic status, do I think that's being too careful? No, I don't, I don't think it is. If you can't stay home and you have to go out into public in a place where you're going to be closer than six feet to the person next to you, if you have to ride in an Uber, a bus, a plane, a train, I would, I would gown up almost like I were going into surgery if this achieves pandemic status, which it officially has not yet. Number seven is stay informed. Uh, I'm gonna try to post updates as we learn information. Uh, I'm definitely not gonna post any kind of um, um, hearsay or rumors or baloney, but if it looks like it's been proven, then I'm gonna post an update and let you know so you can make an informed decision. Um, but stay informed, watch the news, but also check out some YouTube videos and read some, some other news outlets rather than just the mainstream media. Uh, I think that's wise to do that. And then number eight is stay alert, stay aware. I do not be worried, do not panic, do not freak out, but do be alert, do be vigilant. And I think that's very important. And then lastly, I would say is share this knowledge with everyone you love, your family members, your friends, neighbors, uh, churchgoers who you, you're, you like them, share this information so that they also can be prepared because ultimately that's who you'll catch it from is a, is a friend or a family member or someone who you feel like is in your tight knit group who doesn't know this information and then therefore exposes the whole family unnecessarily. Um, then I, I think sensible preparation is in order at this point. I don't want you going out and spend five or 10 grand on prepper supplies and all that foolishness, but I do think it might not be a terrible idea to have a box of gloves, or a pair of wraparound glasses, and an N95 mask, and maybe a disposable gown just in case this achieves pandemic status and you do have to go out in public and you have to be very close proximity to people shoulder to shoulder or crammed in a bus plane, train, or automobile. So that's what I've got for you so far. Please take a second and click the subscribe button and click the bell right beside it so that if I have another coronavirus update, you'll get a notification from YouTube so you won't miss it. And uh, that's it. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.